Hi everybody. Uh, yeah, my name is Michelle Lovegrove. Uh, I'm from the uh, Living Life Program at ETS. And uh, thank you for being on the for us here today. today. It's been interesting having a, a listen to the different things different people have been talking about so far today. Uh, from, you know, the Northern Territory of Prevention to incarceration to the meeting of art, all sorts of things. So, I've been thinking about uh, what I was going to say today and, and um, I've been, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I, because it might be a bit too personal, but, but I, I will, because it might give you, uh, hopefully, a bit of a sense of um, perhaps some of the feelings of some of the works here today. Um, I was uh, born on a, it's another story of my life, by the way, it's just a preamble, born on a late spring day uh, in a place called Port Augusta in South Australia, uh, which was then uh, a very Aboriginal town and still is. Uh, it's actually not my ancestral country. My ancestral country uh, runs down the Murray, the Coorong River to the mouth of the Murray, um, a place called Raukin in South Australia, which was um, a mission and is known as Point Maclay uh, in the uh, English language. Um, I'm the eldest child of a Nunnajeri River woman and uh, a Latvian refugee man. We met in Woomera, at the Woomera rocket range at the time. First eight years of my life, uh, we spent on the move constantly. We never lived more than about four or five months in any particular place. Uh, for my father, that was to facilitate uh, him making a go in his new country. He could barely speak any English and of course had no money. My mother, well, she was supposedly in her own country, she had no money either. But for her, it was to keep us one step ahead of a mob called the Aborigines Protection Board. And the Aborigines Protection Board uh, operated in every state and territory of this country until the 1960s. And depending on the state, it depends on when in the 60s they were actually um, disbanded. And the Chief Protector of Aborigines. And in South Australia, he was uh, pretty almighty and all-powerful. And actually one of my ancestors was a chief protection about sort of five, gener five six generations back. Mum's greatest fear was that her pale-skinned eldest child would be taken by the chief protector of Aborigines. So we kept on the move and we moved all over the country. We moved to towns, cities, Queensland, Victoria, uh, WA, you name it, we went there and uh, to keep me safe. And in that whole process, the family grew, and then there were more children to keep safe. By this point, you know, this we're going into the 70s now, the protection boards had been disbanded. But what had happened on those trips, by the time we finally settled, which was in uh, a place, a uh, Wadi Wadi country in the Illawarra, which you will know as Wollongong, um, by the time we got there, there had been a huge disconnection for us from our home and our extended family. And the story of how we reconnected with all of that is another story, perhaps for another day or another time. But as part of that journey, and it wasn't until many years later when I became older and started asking a lot of questions, one thing became uh, very clear to me was the importance of having a home. And somebody here earlier today spoke about, actually Jeff, I think it was you, about about home, about places and not buildings. Keeping places and safe places are not about buildings. They're about places where you're safe, where you are protected, where you are looked after, where you can be. And um, all of our journey as a child, and then all the questions, and then the journey I had to make to reconnect with, reconnect with what was a very, very large extended family, um, has made that all too clear to me. And so then I look around at, at uh, collections like this, and this is only a, a small part of a much bigger collection. And the importance of a home for something like this is just as important. Because when you look at these paintings, they're not just paintings. You can stand here and you can be artistic and you can say, oh, I love the way he used the colour there and the shading's so nice and the light shines on this bed and it's really balanced and, oh, I think they're making a political statement here. But if you actually delve into these paintings, they are full of the spirit and the creativity and the life of the people who made them. 
And so that is their importance to this land and as a meeting place of all of the people who painted all of these things. It's about the spirit of the paintings and that is the safe place and we need to help Gordon and Elaine find that safe place for this because this is where it all meets, whether the people have passed or whether they are still alive. And if you can help them do this, then you are making a huge contribution to your country because it's about the songs of all of the people who painted these and the rest. So if you can, those of you, you've got... Can I make a plug for the hip pocket and pull the wallet out? <laughs> no, but, but we need to do this. We, we really do need to do this. If, if we can, together, then our descendants are going to be able to enjoy and benefit from what you will do through the collection and the hard work over many years of these two people. So let's see if we can, we can help them do it. Thank you very much. Thank you.